Hey everybody, this is Mike for Fair Day Research. Uh, this is part three of the exclusive uh, Patreon series that I have going on uh, basically the discoveries I've made with this motor and how uh, I'm going forward with this in a particular direction of basically finding out uh, exactly how this motor works and the reason why this motor uh, will basically run on no current or very little current and so I'm gonna go over I've already posted it on patreon uh, the actual schematic of the RPG and as you can see it's a very simple circuit like it's ridiculously easy to understand so I'm just gonna kind of go over it and tell you how it ties in with uh, the spark gap switch um, and how we're getting the high high potential coming out versus how much um, uh, wattage that we're actually putting in the system to actually make it run. So it's kind of best of two worlds between what Joseph Newman was doing versus what Robert, uh, Robert Adams was doing with his motor back in the 60s and 70s. So uh, let's just go over this real fast because I, I don't want to make the videos long because then people get bored and then I just start repeating myself and rambling on like a you know how it is. <laughs> so, uh, okay. So basically you start off at the battery. Now I did have one subscriber say, where's the diode? Okay. Well, the diode would actually be placed right after the power source. So if you were to put a motor speed controller in here, it would be after the motor, motor speed controller. If you don't want to have that back EMF coming back into the battery. Now this is where actually it kind of points out a good point. If you set it up where you have the battery connected directly to the uh, um, uh, spark gap switch, what will happen when it closes, you're going to get a rebound effect. What's going to happen is you're going to have power go towards the coil, but you're also going to have that potential come back. Now, I've actually taken a dead battery before, removed the diode, and the dead battery would run the motor, but because that diode's not present, guess what happens? some of that power goes back into this battery. It starts charging this battery. So basically you could take a battery, say like 10 volts, put it in there. It will run the motor. As it's running the motor, that rebound effect will go back and charge the battery back. So that's a self-regeneration system altogether. That's over unity right there because you're not taking uh, power from an exterior battery source. You're not you're only using the power that's given within the system. So if it's the battery is dead and just by using this circuit, you can recharge that battery that you're using to actually run the device. Well, right there, you can consider that over unity. So this could actually start a big argument. You know, what is the real quote unquote classification of over unity or uh, perpetual motion or whatever you want to call it. It has all these different names and tags on how people want to describe what the phenomenon is. But I would call that a self-regenerating system because of the fact that if there's no diode present, so which I didn't put the diode in the diagram, my apologies, but it would be here before the spark gap switch. So if you leave it out and you decide to run it directly straight off a battery, if that battery is dead, it'll run the, it'll run the motor, it'll run the circuit. But what's going to happen is after a period of time, the battery is going to gain strength. It's going to actually regenerate itself. So if that's possible, then obviously the device is over unity because you're not pulling any extra power from an exterior source other than what the spark gap is providing by pulling in ether energy through the spark gap. So, yeah, um, so we go from there. So it goes into the spark gap switch. So you had, um, this is pin one and pin, uh, pin one, pin three, that controls your read switch. So that would be a series circuit. You would have to have a separate battery to run that. That's fine because it doesn't take that much power. But the thing is, if you want to start putting higher power here, then if you put too much power into your read switch, you could blow your read switch. So pin one and pin three is for the read switch. So you just follow the diagram as it is. I got it posted on Patreon 
so you can see that. And then the rate switch would be placed 23 degrees offset of the coil. And believe it or not, here's another amazing thing. I don't know if I've told anybody this, but 23 and a half degrees is the Earth's access to the sun. I did not know that. The Earth leans on its axis 23 and a half degrees. Exactly the same angle that this thing works at. Which I found kind of profound, kind of weird, that it would have to be 23 degrees offset of the uh, reed switch and it, the motor runs. Um, now you could retard that so down, say, 20 degrees, it'll actually make the motor run faster. So it's just that angle. But that angle, the right perfect angle for operation is 23 and a half degrees, exactly the same angle that the earth tilts towards the sun which i find kind of neat so that circuit is now isolated from the rest of the circuit so this is where the power goes through here so every time this reed switch and the and the motor spins hits the reed switch it closes the circuit that means now the battery connections in connection with this which sends the power directly into the coil now when the when the circuit opens the back emf now will go towards the piezoelectrics and this is where the next major power gain happens within the piezoelectrics most people were using the piezos and you press them and you get voltage well i found out if you hit a piezo crystal with high voltage it will basically amplify that power and give you extra power coming up so I've had high voltage spikes according to my oscilloscope hitting 1.1 kilovolt. So from there, it's just basically follow the line. You go right out to your load, and then the load could be attached to a full weight bridge rectifier if you want to use it as a DC source because it's pulsed. This is pulsed, so it's kind of mimicking um, the AC current, right? Makes total sense. So if you want to rectify that, if you really want to rectify it into a true DC current, you would probably have to put it through two full wave bridge rectifiers back to back and then to a load to be safe, to make it a real true DC current. So I have one hooked up on my system right now. I've actually been contemplating if I should actually add the second uh, full wave bridge rectifier in that circuit to make it a true DC. It all depends what you want, ultimately want to do in the end. Do you want to charge batteries with it or do you run, want to run um, uh, an AC light with it? It all depends. But, you know, it, that's where this is kind of the basic platform. And you can pretty much expand off it, experiment. This is a good start right here. But Believe it or not, one of my theories is keep it all analog. That's what Eric Dollar talks about. The more you keep the system analog, it runs in a more organic way that electricity likes to run in. As soon as you put electricity through electronics like a MOSFET, SSR, whatever you want, he says it destroys the, the fundamental characteristics of electricity. And I 100% agree with Eric Dollard on this. So, yeah, um, it's it's a matter up again for debate, you know, whatever it is. But I, I actually do agree with Eric Dollard on this. If you're going to make an energy system, it's got to be organic or analog, right? Why do you think they got rid of all that stuff with the electronics? Electronics, like the way they've done electronics over the years, they're using it as a terrorist weapon. They really, truly are. Now, you know, that's that leads into another debate, which we could go hours on that. But keep it analog. Keep it super simple. Now, you could add multiple piezos. I've tried it. I don't get any extra gains. It has to do with the input voltage. Like Joseph Newman did, he had 84 9-volt batteries all hooked up in parallel he got 460 volts out of those 84 small 9 volt batteries he was moving a 7,000 pound rotor okay so that's going to tell you something right there these motors if you build them and construct them properly will run on voltage not current where 
see, Tesla was thinking the same way, but people didn't understand at the time, around 1905, 1910, he was getting away from a power-based system and going into an energy-based system. And meaning by energy, the energy does not require a current. The current is a power-based system, brute force, which is incredibly wasteful. But if you build an apparatus like this one, you can get the best of both worlds by going by an energy-based system, not a power-based system. All right? So the higher the voltage you put into this motor, the more power you're going to get, the less demand for the actual current will be needed. So if I bump this up someday to 48 or even 64 volts, my, my parameters for my input wattage are going to drop even lower. And the best part about it, the way this is constructed, my output potential wattage is going to increase that much even higher because now I'm taking that voltage, I put it through a full way bridge, and I can hammer that right into a, a really nice large capacitor bank, which will give me the power I need to run, say, an inverter or whatever. You know what I mean? You kind of get the idea where I'm going with this. So the current is actually generated within the coil. We're working on an energy-based system, not a power-based system. So if you construct a motor that doesn't require current to run it, well, guess what? Your battery lasts forever. So basically, this thing should, in theory, as soon as I get the four batteries hooked up, and that'll be the next step is hooking up four batteries in parallel, make it as one big battery, you know, that 0 0.05 watts between all, all four batteries the battery won't even see it. They won't even notice it. It's only picking up the voltage off it. So that's where we're getting the over unity. The less power in watts that you have to put into the system versus how much you can generate within the system and put out, that's where you're going to have your over unity effects. And that's where this motor is really going to change things in the direction of, you know, uh, um, I hate using the word free energy, but, uh, you know, perpetual uh, energy machines that can potentially run your house forever. Uh, if you, you like I'm still in the beginning, but I'm in the process now trying to build something that at, at an industrial level that can be used at a home to run your house. So, yeah, um, I hope you like the video. I hope uh um, this three-part series helped you guys out again uh, for all my patreons you always have the first tips for getting answers and questions and uh, shooting ideas back and forth I've made a lot of great friends through patreon uh, I talked to Aaron I talked to a few guys uh, uh, through patreon and uh, yeah so it's a great community I hope you guys get acquainted with each other in in the community within my patreon which is great because you know, it's not just me that's going to do this. It's going to be everybody's help, right? So I'm just trying to create a foundation of a concept. What it boils down to, a foundation of a concept. And I'm seeing results. I'm actually seeing uh, very encouraging results. There's other stuff I have planned. Um, I'm going to be working on the carbon batteries again. I just got the uh, carbon plates in. Uh, a couple of days ago, I'll be working on those uh, within the next week. So you guys will get the first dibs on seeing that. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the series. And uh, thanks for subscribing uh, to my Patreon. You guys are great. Thanks. You guys get it. And uh, yeah, we'll see everybody soon.